Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay. So, uh, so far in the course uh, we have actually uh, done a lot of theory on open queuing systems. Um, we have been looking at numerical examples in the previous lecture we actually saw some formulae for response time for MM1 and MD1 queues and we also saw some simple uh, numerical examples and some plots on that. Uh, but um, this course is uh, of, uh, of practical value, uh, we have to look for practical application of the queuing formulae and of the uh, queuing laws that we are studying. The whole goal of the course is so that people start applying um, th the theory of queuing systems to uh, whenever they measure and do any other uh, ways of analyzing uh, systems, they should be able to apply you know, queuing system laws also. So, in keeping with that, we are going to continue the case study that we had started uh, in the lecture before the last um, of the experimental performance measurement of a web server uh, and we will continue to do a study of it under an open generation of load because uh, we are studying open queuing systems. Okay. So, uh, this re recap like just again I give this for reference uh, every time uh, we have our little slaw and we have our asymptotes and some metrics for the non asymptotes. Um, again just recap of the setup, the, there is a client load generator uh, and there is a web server and uh, here we measure the utilization, here we can measure the response time and throughput, we have one core and one thread and the uh, execution time of the script and the web server was 50 milliseconds. So, uh, this is a, again recap, uh, the throughput and utilization graphs uh, we had seen in the lecture before the previous one and we had seen that uh, the match uh, the, of the predicted versus measured for throughput and both ut and utilization also is pretty good. The match uh, it only uh, diverges a little bit at high loads otherwise it is pretty good. Uh, so, we had left uh, the previous uh, uh, case study lecture we had left at wondering uh, as to what about response time. We had the measured graph for the response time, can we do any prediction uh, for response time and uh, meanwhile then in the previous lecture we have learned those formulae. Right? So, uh, let us go ahead and assume uh, that the web server is an MD1 queuing system. Okay? Whether the arrivals are really memoryless or not is not very clear. Uh, you can give um, the inter arrival time as uh, exp exponential to the load generator, but uh, it may not be able to do that very precisely. Uh, but we still assume uh, because one reason is because that is the only formula we have. So, we may want to just ask the question as to if I use this formula then how far from the real measurement is this formula's prediction. right? So, the, uh, the, the D part though the deterministic part is not bad we had uh, referred to that earlier also the execution time of the script is not expected to be variable it is a fixed size loop. So, it, will, it should take a fixed amount of time. So, MD1 response time we had uh, uh, derived in the previous lecture it is basically tau plus lambda tau squared divided by 2 1 minus rho this is the response time. So, this graph basically shows the predicted uh, r using this formula uh, compared with the measured r and you can see how it matches up. Okay. So, the lower values are ok, uh, just as uh, the load increases the measured r has, uh, has a strange uh, behavior, um, it is uh, it's almost as if it goes down a little. Um, over here and then it shoots up sh sharply. Still um, as a trend and a visual comparison of actually capturing the non-linearity non of how response time increases, uh, the predicted response time does quite okay and also the point at which the sudden increase happens that is also predicted quite well by the formula. So, considering how beautiful and 
simple looking the formula is, um, my claim is that it still does a very good job at, at predicting uh, something like a response time. Uh, the match, the strict match may not be that accurate okay, at the higher level this, this part uh, for example uh, is not this part is, is obviously there is a big gap here. But uh, these are not, not uh, preferred regions of operation anyway. Right? Uh, if I am operating a web server, this is not uh, the point, if, if the capacity of the web server I know is around 20, I will not be wanting to really operate or uh, the web server at like uh, arrival rate 19 per second or uh, even like 18 or, or something like that. I will be planning my uh, server system such that each web server actually just gets you know load at, at this. At, at maximum these levels, right. Uh, so, the, the claim I am making here is that uh, once you are operating in a region that you, are, you do not really want to anyway, then all bets are off and uh, response times uh, even in will, will differ from measurement to measurement, there will be huge differences. It is just a very unstable region of operation and at that point the matches are not typically good. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the number of requests at the server. Okay. Uh, we can calculate if now that we have response time uh, and we have throughput also from our measurement uh, re recall here we have throughput right, we have the throughput and we have response time. So, we could just calculate the number of requests that we think are at the server. Okay. Uh, but then again the question is can we actually measure it and see how well that, that calculation matched the measurement. So, it turns out uh, we can actually measure um, something at the, uh, if we do some clever measurements like we can measure the number of active processes uh, of the web server, those will be the uh, requests that are actually being processed at the web server. That is actually for a particular kind of web server which was there in this experiment it actually does correspond to the number of requests that are currently at the server because the queue is actually 0 and uh, every request just corresponds to a process. So, if you measure the number of active processes uh, that is actually uh, basically how many requests are currently at the server. So, this is what was done in this particular experiment and uh, uh, the again the blue line shows the, uh, the calculated and the orange line shows the measured and uh, at the low values uh, the match is amazing and uh, at the high level values there is some divergence. But again it is you know it is just like from 240 to 270 or something like that it is really not bad if you needed this to just do some sizing of say memory or some other requirement of those many requests at the server. Uh, it is it is a pretty good uh, uh, match. Uh, again Little's law is so beautiful look at this little formula okay this is such a small uh, and an elegant looking formula and it matches such complicated measurements. So, I, I that is one uh, point I want to emphasize that uh, there are a lot of assumptions it feels like it is so unrealistic, but it, the match that these formula give is actually pretty good. Uh, I have just shown this because this is there is so much overlap here and uh, so I have shown this in, in a log scale here. Uh, and in the log scale the differences at the low load also are, are apparent, but again they are not so great and uh, in fact this looks uh, uh, you know kind of better at the log scale. So, uh, again moral of the story takeaway is that uh, it is a pretty good match between predicted uh, and, and, and measured. Okay, so, now uh, I want to show one more experiment in the same setup largely the same same idea there is a web server, there is a load generator. This time the only di main difference is that the script is different. We have uh, the script is uh, taking 42 milliseconds instead of 50 and we have 4 CPUs here. Okay. If I show a CPU like this, uh, we have 4 CPUs and we have lots of threads, lot of threads. So, the threads are not a bottleneck. The main queuing system that we will be worried about is the cores. Okay. 
uh, and as usual we ignore the other delays everything else remains the same. Okay. So, this was an actual experiment again done uh, by uh, a pair of students as a part of a class project and I am just showing some of those results. Okay. Uh, let us look at throughput first and let us record it is a 42 millisecond script uh, running on a 4 core machine uh, on the server. So, uh, initially up to uh, a certain point here you can see here there is a fairly clear x equal to y line this is 40 and this is 40 right this is 60, this is 60, though there is a very clear this is 20, this is 20, it is almost very theoretical x equal to y line that we uh, expect for throughput. And then at one point here which is around 70 requests per second, uh, there is some, so if you just look at a sort of a, uh, average approximately 70 requests per second is where the throughput seems to be flattening out. Now uh, uh, that means our C mu here is 70 since C is 4 mu is basically 17.5 requests per second. Uh, if you take the inverse of that, our tau estimate from this graph turns out to be 57 milliseconds. Okay? I hope you are realizing what I am doing. I am actually going backwards from the throughput graph. right? Uh, the maximum throughput achieved is 70 requests per second. Theory tells us that that should be C mu. Right? So, our C mu is 70. So, if I back calculate from there, my tau is turning out to be 57 milliseconds. So, what is happening here is if I calculate from the throughput if I try to estimate my tau it is not matching this 42 milliseconds that well. I got 57 but I got 42 here. Okay. So, just uh, note this, this issue. Okay. Uh, now, let us look at utilization, CPU utilization. Again we have a fairly linear kind of curve here and uh, it flattens out at less than 100 percent that is not according to theory. right? It seems to flatten out at around uh, 92 percent. Uh, this is not according to theory at our when our through arrival rate is maximum we are the CPU is supposed to go to 100 percent. Uh, also the flattening out is happening at around 80 requests per second. So, this is also weird what we expect is it happens at CMU. Right? And uh, CMU uh, in the from the previous thing looked like it was 70. Okay, and uh, in fact, uh, yeah. So so let's let's uh, so if if we if we but if we consider this as CMU, which is the CMU at which maximum utilization happens, if that we consider as 80 requests per second, then. Uh, then we get a tau of 50 milliseconds, right? If we go from say 80 is is a C mu divided by 4, 20 requests per second is mu, and then inverse of that will be tau, which is 50 milliseconds. Um, so this is yet another estimate of uh, service time that we have. Uh, now let's look at some values here, right? What what about values here? This also is a is a measured utilization. This also should give us an estimate of tau. So, we are basically uh, doing uh, rho equal to lambda tau by C, tau is 0 by tau. So, if you plug that in here, you get a 47 approximately 46.3 millisecond estimate uh, for this for this value and you get a uh, 48.28 millisecond estimate if you take this value. Okay. So, if you take two different values of rho and try to estimate tau you get this. So, this is close enough this is not bad and average is 47 milliseconds. Now, this is closer to the running time of the script of 42 milliseconds. Okay. Note that 42 milliseconds if this is the tau then uh, CMU is actually close to 80 requests per second. Right? Um, no, actually it is, uh, it is greater than 80, much greater than 80 requests per second. With 50 milliseconds, we have a 20 requests per second uh, capacity of one core and uh, 80 for four cores. So, with 42 milliseconds, we should be having much more. Okay, now, let us look at response time. Uh, what we are getting here is uh, the low load estimate of response time here is actually around 50 milliseconds. 
okay, which if we use that as our tau then our mu is 80 requests per second right. Uh, sorry C mu is 80 requests per second, mu will be 20 requests per second and C mu will be 80 requests per second. Uh, but what we are seeing here is that the response time actually rises sharply at 70 not 80 ok. So, it looks like 70 should be where uh, it should be close to the C mu and if you use that again we are back to the 57 milliseconds tau ok. So, this is a kind of a confusing experiment what is happening here just to recap the throughput ok here the throughput curve showed a C mu of uh, 70 milliseconds ok, 70 requests per second ok that is what this is saying ok. So, that corresponded to a tau of 57 milliseconds. The utilization on the other hand if you look at this part ok, uh, it is showing uh, that uh, the, the capacity after which uh, there is a flattening out ok uh, is, is uh, looks like around 80 ok, uh, but the script running time is, is 42. Okay. So, uh, and, and 80 this, this corresponds to basically 50 milliseconds tau, okay. but this actual script running tau, uh, time which the uh, people who did this experiment have measured was 42 milliseconds. Okay. So, so, what is going on here? Uh, what is going on is actually uh, nothing, there is no major explanation uh, and in this uh, class actually is not where we are, I am going to provide a very detailed explanation. Uh, this our focus here is to just study and see uh, whether our queuing theory uh, laws are matching our predictions or not. And the outcome of this study is simply to say that there is something wrong with this experiment and uh, there is something we are missing. And if we were really trying to find out that you know what is happening, then uh, we need to understand the system better and maybe model the system better ok. So, uh, the summary remarks from this uh, case study is that in some setups uh, the metric values uh, predicted by queuing theory, theoretic formulae will match exactly that is the experiment 1 that we saw that every, every chart that we saw that you know there was a perfect match uh, and it matched with the service time and matched with what we would have theoretically predicted. But in some setups the predicted versus measured numbers may not match exactly. Uh, the amount of this match between 57 and 50 and 40 might be fine also, but still there is some mystery as to why uh, the throughput is actually flattening out at 70 requests per second ok. Uh, if the tau is uh, actually 40 milliseconds uh, then mu is uh, 25 requests per second and C mu is 100 requests per second. So, with 42 millisecond our C mu should be close to 100 ok, maybe it will be 90 or something ok. Uh, it, it should not be 70. So, uh, what, what this is doing, what theory is helping us do is, is, is helping us do all these calculations and at least spot that there is something wrong in this experiment that uh, one chart is telling me one thing, one chart is telling me another thing, third chart is telling me another thing. So, uh, I should look for what the problem is and the, the, the leads to how to look for it is sometimes there is really just measurement error. Maybe the throughput is being measured wrongly, maybe it is actually all consistent, but there is something going wrong in our calculations or our experimental setup in the way we measure it. Um, the other thing could be that genuinely the model is not capturing the complexities of the system. For example, there is some other bottleneck, CPU is not the bottleneck even though we had written a CPU bound script. So, that CPU is uh, what will determine the, the capacity of the system, uh, but it may not be the bottleneck. Now, what do I mean by bottleneck? Uh, bottleneck is a word that is used in systems when there are multiple uh, multiple resources. So, there is one resource that could be the CPU, there is another resource that could be the IO um, 
and uh, a, a request that comes into the system may be using this resource and may be using that resource. We have so far looked at a request that is uh, from the point of view of only one resource, but requests may need multiple resources and maybe the throughput is being limited not by CPU, but by IO. Okay? So, there could be something else that is going on here uh, that we need to understand about the system and model a little better. And uh, in fact, that leads us to the next topic uh, for this class, which is going to be open queuing networks. Uh, so, thank you.